Nuclear developed Protocol Storm 20S. It's currently located off the northeastern end of Madagascar right now as a tropical storm on the Saffir Simpson scale and is moving very slowly off towards the west right now. Um, it's in fact probably not even moving at all in the latest few frames. So it is stalling to the northeast of Madagascar, bringing a very heavy rainfall threat to portions of the island. On the northern end, that is. Right now, it's got winds of 50 miles per hour, pressure at 996 millibars, and once again moving west right now at a solid 9 miles per hour per our latest estimates, although that movement has substantially probably slowed down, and it is forecast to not move very much in the next 12 to 24 hours. So here's where the storm is located right now, 12.7 degrees south, 50.8 degrees east is its current location. It's located 70 miles away from Bahamar, 116 from San Baba, 156 from Analaha, 646 from St. Paul, and 680 from Port Louis. Those last two ones are on Mauritius and Réunion, and those distances are likely to close over the next few days as the storm is going to end up in those directions, and the Day 5 forecast point is just to the northwest of those two islands. So if you are in Mauritius and Réunion, watch out for the storm. It is indeed heading in your direction. So already, it's got a relatively circular wind field, has to be said. Uh, 75 nautical miles is maximum extent on the northwestern side and 60 on the northeastern side. Thankfully, right now, no tropical cyclone related watches or warnings are in effect, but I imagine that there's probably going to be some heavy rainfall watches or warnings or advisories of some sort in portions of northern Madagascar. As this one is uh, pretty dang close and it's already dropping heavy amounts of rainfall over those uh, the island nation of Madagascar, in particular the northern end of it. So as a result, here's what we're seeing right now with the main threats for the storm right now. It hasn't got the name just yet, but it, I imagine it will be pretty shortly by Mat uh, Mateo France, that is. But the heavy rainfall threat is the main hazard with this storm. We could be seeing up to 450 millimeters of rainfall along the immediate portions of the coastline of Madagascar, in particular the eastern and northeastern sides, as the storm uh, stalls and then continues off towards the southeast. It's a bit unclear on how strong the winds will get along the coastline of Madagascar. You'll see in just a second how close the storm is forecast to get. It's forecast to get pretty dang close to the coastline. And uh, any impacts in Rodrigues and Mauritius later down the line at this point are uncertain. Although residents are strongly advised to watch the storm very closely as a significant hit for either Reunion or Mauritius. Or a close pass in between the islands is entirely possible. So here's our latest forecast. Not moving very much initially, but then it starts to get intensity quite quickly here. You'll see that we do forecast in quite a substantial intensity as it moves away from Mauritius here, uh, not Mauritius, Madagascar. Category 3 on the South Francisco scale, this is a medium confidence forecast on both location and track and intensity. So, it's a bit of a question mark of, um, does land interaction help out the storm or does it hinder it? And there are some environmental issues that need to be worked out as well. So here's the latest Storm Typhoon 1 Center forecast cone. It's interesting to point out that they are forecasting a 110 miles per hour peak. But I'm a bit concerned at how fast they weaken the storm. They have it down to 70 miles per hour at day 5. Although, that's interesting because conditions do support a much stronger storm at day 5. And computer models do suggest that this storm will be much stronger at the day 5 point. And as a result, I think that their, for their day 5 forecast at this point is too low. So here's what we're seeing right now on the satellite estimates. Of course, the TWC is down at 40 miles per hour. It ASCAP passed around 18Z earlier today. Got winds of around 40 to 45 miles per hour when you counter for undersampling by the uh, instrument. Um, typically, what you do is you see that it got 40 miles per hour winds and you add on 5 miles per hour to that, or 5 knots, as we like to say it. And that's where we got 45 miles per hour. And just based on improvements since then, that's where I've got the 50 miles per hour estimate, and that's our estimate right now. So, here is the latest GFS model run, and you can see that this is through the next 5 days, you can see just how far beyond that day 5 point is. Compared to the latest storm type one in forecast run, so does the storm speed up a little bit more than forecast? That is entirely possible. You know, that, that's why we say that this is a cone and that it could be anywhere within that day five circle. So imagine that day five point being a massive circle. The storm could be anywhere within that at the day five point. Now the question is, is what intensity that will that be whenever it reaches these two islands? It could be anywhere from, as the joint type one in standard forecasting, a mid tropical storm, or it could be potentially even a Category 3 or Category 4 if all things go go correctly for the storm. So this could be a pretty significant impact for these regions, especially if the storm stays farther offshore. You can see that the GFS keeps the bulk of this core of this storm offshore, and that would uh, help it intensify even further. 
These are the sea temperatures are underneath the storm right now, 29 to 30 degrees Celsius, but they are favorable for identification, and they do drop off just a little bit as you go towards Mauritius and Reunion. But they are still going to remain favorable for the storm to identify as it heads towards those island nations. Um, not going to be an issue at all for the storm, really, to be honest. Um, not really going to be seeing surface temperatures inhibit the storm very much over the next few days. The surface observation maps, thankfully, aren't really suggesting very much too yet, but we'll have to watch those observation areas on Mauritius and Reunion later on the line for potential impacts in those areas, and that fishing on the east coast of Madagascar. What kind of wind gusts does it get in these in the storm's outer bands? We'll have to wait and see, though. It's not getting impacted by any sort of outer bands just yet. Um, it's very close to one, has to be said, in, in recent frame, on the little imagery, but the outer band has managed to stay just north of that recording station, so we aren't really seeing any quote-unquote useful observation just yet. We'll keep an eye on that now. So here's what we're seeing right now on the track forecast graph. You can see that it is a little bit uncertain on where the storm goes. You see the, the there are tightly clustered in the initial frame in the initial time frame, uh, given that the storm is going to stall towards where it is right now. But the question is how fast does it move off towards the southeast? HWF is a little bit slower than the GFS. Um, so there is a little bit of uncertainty on that time front as well as uh, how fast does it move southeast and when. The AWRF, um, with that slower movement, is going for a much higher intensity, forecasting a 140 mile per hour category 4 there, or higher even. Um, so it's certainly going for a enormous intensity. GFS is down a little bit more at basically a, a low to mid category 2. So as we said, either one of those situations could honestly happen. Wind shear is dropping a little bit and is forecast to get near nil in the next 24 hours. And will remain favorable for the next few days as the storm stalls or as the storm stalls to the northeast of Madagascar. Even when it moves southeastwards, it's going to have a jet interaction potentially. And that could enhance the storm even further. CTF temperature is not going to be an issue, and relative humidity also pretty favorable for the storm to identify. Pretty northeast of Madagascar, so all systems are go for the storm in the next Few, uh, in the next few days, but still could some question marks to be answered in the medium to long range of this storm, in terms of track, forecast, and intensity, and movement speed. Here's how this storm is looking on the visible satellite imagery in the morning hours of today. You see that it's got, it's got that massive gap in between when it was nighttime over there, so there, there's the latest frame right there, you can see it's just there. Um, it's, it's got a bit of an interesting appearance, um, I'll wait for the infrared to appear here, but there are some signs on microwave imagery that the storm is already building a core, and this is a, a case of where land interaction might potentially be helping out this storm, um, but at the same time, that land interaction, if it does end up building that core, could also hinder it a little bit, so it's, it's a bit of an uncertain time frame of how much land interaction inhibits the storm, um, does it help it out, does it hinder it? That's still a question mark to be answered. Um, it's just up to the storm at this point. Um, honestly, if we're going to really see a very strong storm after this, category four, category, high in category 4 to category 5, this storm needs to get moving. I don't think it's going to get that strong, but if I had to guess, a mid-category 3 is probably on the cards right now. Um, it can be a little bit stronger than that, but a certainly a significant storm it could be on the way for... Um, the Southwest Indian Ocean here. The next name, I believe, is... I've, it's just off the top of my head, but it, it's the G name. Um, I imagine Matteo France will be naming it in the next few hours, and we'll have further updates on this dangerous storm as it pushes off towards Mauritius and Rodrigues, and adopt heavy rainfall in Northeastern Madagascar. And you can subscribe for the latest information on this dangerous storm. <laughs>